So what I have on the table today is Tiny Epic Western. And I'm kind of bringing this game up specifically to highlight the poker mechanic within Tiny Epic Western and kind of talk about old or classic games being incorporated into newer games and how that kind of falls apart and fails in many, many ways. And for, for me, Tiny Epic Western feels like two games are being played. One is like a worker placement game, which is amazing. And that's my favorite style of game right now is worker placement. So I really like the idea of placing my cowboys on specific locations to earn more buildings and get points and get cool things. But the other mechanic is based on these poker cards that are kind of on the outside here. Now, the, the deck is really thin and you're supposed to play like this three card poker shenanigans. When you put your dude on one of these locations, you can decide to get one resource easily or gamble to get a bigger resource, there's almost always a gamble location on the board as well. So there's like one gamble location and one location where you can sort of gamble or just get a, a weaker thing. And if you gamble, the idea is that once your, your dude is there, you will turn over your card that you got early or earlier, and then you will play poker based on the cards that are revealed here. And you can end up revealing these cards, you know, I mean, I believe these cards get revealed sort of early on, but when you play the game, I now have to deal with this five in my hand. So this five of uh, bulls or five of skulls. Now currently I'm not gonna win any of these. I'm not gonna win any of these sort of things. But not, it, when you start the game, you do get to choose your card out of like a couple different options. So like if I chose Goodness gracious, this is a really weird hand. So I would probably, if I had the option, to pick up a one, but all the ones are on the table, so I would want to pick up like a two, if I could. Because the idea of picking up the two would mean that I would have a short, or I'd have a, uh, I'd have a straight in this place. The idea is that there's a one on one side, a three on the other, and I have the two. So I'm able to get a straight here. Now, if I wanted to have a bigger number, like a five, I could try to just hope that I have the biggest five or the biggest number in this space here because both players are gonna end up having uh, just a pair of ones. Knowing that all the ones are on the table, I would have to fight somebody over this using my five. And then if people have a tie, then there's a specific suit ranking that kind of goes along with it. But that whole mechanic just feels so tacked on. And I feel like the reason why it feels so tacked on is because it's missing what poker actually is. Poker is gambling. Poker is not hedging your bets necessarily. It's about knowing what your opponent thinks they don't know or kind of reading what they're gonna do and trying to convince them that you have a weaker hand when you actually have a stronger hand if you feel like you can sort of play the table. There is no playing the table here. Once everything is done and said, you you either find out that you were ahead or find out that you were behind, and the, the element of bluffing is far weaker in this game than in like classic poker. There are very few times, I feel, that you can add a, a classic game like poker to another game and actually enhance that game. And this is rife in Western themed games. I feel like a lot of Western themed games feel the need to add some sort of poker element for unnecessary reasons, in, in my opinion. The, the second worst game to do this to is probably chess, which I've seen other games that try to incorporate like some sort of chess mechanic, but it's always chess plus. It's always like, I've got chess, but then I also have like these cards that you don't know about. And it's like, well, chess is a game of pure information. So why are you adding this element of non-information? And like the best, poker mechanic that I've seen is actually probably in Sheriff of Nottingham because it's more about bluffing. It's not about playing cards. It's not about making combinations. It's not about making suits and flushes and runs and full houses. It's about bidding, bribing, and bluffing. That is more akin to poker than what we have here on the table. Now, if this game decided to have some sort of bluff mechanic, 
or if the uh, that's not true there is a bit of bluffing there is a there is a thing where you'll double down on one space knowing you don't have the best card for it and somebody may not go there but the but the loss the opp the opportunity to lose is so much weaker than in like classic poker where you're actually losing money that this just gets sort of lost it doesn't get the gravitas that poker generally carries with it because it's a money betting game and unfortunately tiny epic western for me fell flat as a result i really loved the worker placement aspect i really liked these uh i can't remember what these are called actually they're um they, they give you value at the end of the game based on what buildings you bought. So like if I bought a certain number of buildings, they have these symbols on them at the top. If I can get a certain symbol up to be, you know, the most valuable, I'll get more value out of those cards. I thought that was a really great mechanic. I like the idea of being able to shoot your opponents and have them, you know, you get the wanted card and you have bullets as a resource to like overtake your opponent in a worker placement game that's really cool so like I can't go to that space because you've been there well I guess I'll shoot you and go there anyway and a great mechanic but ultimately the poker element just seemed really odd that is a big problem for me and actually my group if you were to ask me what my least favorite mechanic is in a game it would probably be dice mitigating whether or not I can take my turn but the second least favorite thing that I can't stand about games is when they incorporate poker, chess, or checkers, or some other classic, like backgammon, or some sort of like old, 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 old game into their current game to try to make it better. It just ends up falling flat. It ends up being a weaker version of the two games if you're mashing two games together. So this was a little bit of a, I don't like Tiny Epic Western, but the rest of the Tiny Epic franchise is actually super good. I've Most of them I really enjoy. And I may do thoughts on other ones. My favorite one being uh, Tiny Epic Galaxies, so we may take a look at that later. And if you want to make sure that you see that video, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you're on YouTube, tap your screen if you're on IGTV, hit the little follow button that should be right around here somewhere. And uh, yeah, you'll get notifications about all our upcoming videos.